good day everyone and um, I've got a lot of requests to um, review the uh, the main theorem of the differential equations um, course which is the Picard Lindelof theorem about existence and uniqueness of solutions uh, of ordinary differential equations so I'm going to record a few videos about all the steps of the theorem and about some intuition behind it okay? so um, what is the theorem about? So in, in the Picard and Lindelof theorem, we have a differential equation, y prime equals f of ty, where f of ty is uh, some function of two variables. And we have the initial condition, uh, y of t0 equals y0. Well, uh, further, we are assuming that the um, uh, right-hand side of the differential equation is defined in some rectangle in the plane t y and so specifically we have this initial point t0 y0 and we are assuming that the, the whole rectangle around it um, is where uh, the right hand side of the differential equation is, is well defined so and which means we can visualize it uh, as a vector field right so uh, suppose that it is defined for values of t between say um, alpha and beta and for values of y between uh, say gamma and delta huh? so this is gamma this is delta and this is the y-axis yeah, so let me write it down so we are assuming that the right hand side of the differential equation f of t y is defined for values of t that are between um, alpha and beta and values of y that are between delta uh, sorry gamma and delta Well, uh, furthermore, there are two more technical conditions. Uh, in order for the theorem to be true, we need to assume, well, that's the first assumption that f is defined in some rectangle, uh, rectangular neighborhood of the initial point. So we are assuming that f is continuous with respect to t on I'll just write in t as a function of t f is continuous for every specific value uh, of y if we fix y to be uh, well any specific number then f becomes a function of, of t and then we require it to be a continuous function of t and third f uh, is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y so f satisfies the Lipschitz condition so lip uh, Sheets in Y, which means the following. The Lipschitz condition means that uh, there exists a, a positive constant K such that uh, the absolute value of F of um, T Y1 minus F of T Y2 absolute value is less than K times y1 times y2 or well, less than or equal of course y1 may be exactly equal to y2 then this is zero um, less than or equal to zero okay so uh so what is the, this Lipschitz condition Lipschitz condition is a special property of functions that um is very useful in real analysis and in theory of differential equations now uh how do we verify whether a given function satisfies a Lipschitz condition? Uh, the, the simplest thing to do is uh, to show that if a function is continuously differentiable, then it satisfies the Lipschitz condition. So, which is why um, in the in the homework you have question. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's question six. To prove that if a function is continuously differentiable, then it satisfies the Lipschitz condition. 
So for instance, if our function is continuously differentiable with respect to both t and y, then it surely satisfies both of these conditions and uh, the Karli and the Lerf theorem apply. Right? So then under all the, these conditions, the conclusion of the Picari and the Lerf theorem is that then uh, that there is a unique solution of the initial value problem. There is you unique solution of the initial value problem. And uh, although there is a unique solution, uh, but the, there is uh, one more little restriction is that this um, solution of the initial value problem, it may not be defined on the whole interval from alpha to beta, right? So I will write that this is going to be y of t, the solution of the initial value problem, and it is defined for values of t that are between some alpha prime and beta prime, where the interval alpha prime from beta prime is a subset of the interval from alpha to beta. And of course, the initial value of t belongs here. And so that's the conclusion of the Picardi and the Love theorem. Well, let me uh, maybe uh, draw it on, on this on this picture, right? So it tells us that it is always possible to draw a curve in this, this rectangle, which is going to be tangent to the vector field at each point. So such a curve could probably go like, I don't know, like this. But the value, uh, the, the range, the interval for t in which the curve is defined maybe actually smaller than alpha, the, the interval from alpha to beta. So for example, imagine that um, it looks a little bit differently. So it means, so imagine that I'm going to redraw my vector field. So suppose that the vector field looks like this. That the arrows here are steeper. Then this curve seems it has to be tangent to the vector field at each point, and it would will just go up, and here it will also go up, and then uh, the interval in T for which the, the curve is defined and stays within the rectangle is not from alpha to beta, but is smaller, so it is from alpha prime to beta prime. So the interval from alpha prime to beta prime is typically smaller. Right. So this is the existence part, and this is the remark about the domain, about the fact that the domain of the solution of the initial value problem may be smaller uh, than the domain of the right hand side. All right, so now I have explained uh, the existence part, and I have explained the domain part. So let me uh, maybe explain the uniqueness part. So what is uniqueness? It means that uh, there cannot be two different solutions of this, the same initial value problem. So the uniqueness part means that, uh, well, okay, so imagine that we have a, suppose we have uh, some differential equation that can be visualized as a vector field. Now, uh, suppose that this is the initial point, and is it possible that this is a solution, and at the same time, say, this curve is also a solution? Now, th this, is, this is definitely impossible, and in order to see this, we do not need the Picardi and the Love theorem. Right? So, because if this picture were possible, then the vector field at this point would be would have to have this direction, and at the same time, it would have to have this tangent vector, and they are different at the same point, so this is the contradiction to the concept of the direction field, so which means that this, this is definitely impossible.
Well, but now the theorem tells us something even deeper. So even if we try to imagine a situation like like following, so suppose that we have our direction field. And suppose that th this is my initial point, right? So um, what I know is that a solution of the initial value problem must be, well, the, the, this vector at the initial point mu must be tangent vector to the solution. So the solution could, could be something like this. So strictly speaking, we may have another solution that is also a tangent to the this vector at this point. So imagine that maybe this is a solution too. Now the Picard and Delors theorem tell, tells us that this is impossible either. Right? So if this is not possible and it's easy to see, but this is not possible either. So this, this is also impossible for possible because of the Picard and Delors theorem. So in other words, uh, if we have a an ordinary differential equation with the right hand side satisfying um, the, 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 these conditions or well maybe uh, easier to memorize but um, more the, the, the restrictive condition is that the right hand side is a continuously differentiable function of both t and y then um, solutions of the differential equation are always disjoint they cannot intersect and they cannot even have a common point at which they are tangent to each other. So solutions, if you, uh, if you plot two solutions, that they do not intersect at all. 